Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your Adventure Tower playset. This video will follow the steps outlined in your assembly manual that comes with the playset. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Your playset will come in several boxes, but should all be included in one crate, so let's take a look at what you should have received. There are steps within this assembly that require three people, so be sure to have at least two other adults available to help. Before we begin the assembly process, let's take a look at some of the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a half inch socket, Phillips screwdriver, half inch wrench, one fourth wrench, a ladder, a rubber mallet, safety glasses, two 3 16 Allen key, which is included, a block of wood, a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. 3 8 drill bit, 5 16 drill bit, a Phillips bit, a tape measure, and a hammer. To make this easier, we're going to use a 3 16 hex head socket and a socket adapter. When building your playset, it's important to have it on a flat level area, free from any obstructions, at least seven feet from any buildings, trees, fences, or any other object. Also, to reduce the risk of injury, it's important that you prepare a shock absorbing surface to build your playset on, such as recycled rubber mulch or wood chips. It's crucial that you refer to your manual to review the safety instructions for this build. All right, let's get started. First attach the angle deck supports to the short support tube, making sure this hole is closer to the top and the dimples on the angle deck support are on the bottom. Now repeat the previous step for the remaining angled deck supports and the short support tube. Attach the two assemblies from the previous steps to the long support tube, making sure these holes are closer to the top and the dimpled holes on the angled supports are facing down. Now attach a foot cap to the tower pole with the warning sticker, making sure the holes in the foot cap line up with the holes on the tower pole. Now we're going to attach the tower pole to the deck support assembly, making sure you attach the tower pole to the short support tube, not the long support tube making sure that the dimples on the angled deck supports are on the same side as your foot caps. When attaching your tower pole, make sure that these dimpled holes are facing out and that you secure it through these two holes. Now attach the angled deck supports to the tower pole.
For the next step, attach the small braces to the pole through this hole, only finger tighten the hardware for now. Starting with the bottom brace, bend it up until the holes align and secure with the hardware. Go ahead and tighten up all of the hardware. Similar to the other tower pole, attach a foot cap to the bottom of each of the tower poles. Similar to the previous tower pole, attach another tower pole to the deck support assembly, making sure the dimpled holes are facing out. Attach the braces to the tower pole using the same method as before. Only finger tighten the hardware for now. Attach the short braces to the angled support bar using the same method as before. Now connect the remaining tower poles to the deck support assembly using the same method as before. Now attach the tower extensions to the three poles that don't have any warning label. These poles should be marked EMM. If they're not, they have one hole 
on each end. When attaching the tower extension, make sure that the hole further away from the edge attaches to the pole. Now attach the final tower extension to the pole with the warning label, making sure it's labeled EML. If it's not, you'll have these two holes that'll line up with these two holes. Now attach the rails to the pole with the warning sticker through the hole just below the tower extension. Continue attaching the rails to the tower poles until it makes a complete circle. Now attach the pole caps to the top of the tower poles. Now stand the assembly up on its feet. Now place your end cap into the trapeze swing bar making sure the holes line up. then secure with the hardware. Secure the long swing bar to the short swing bar with the hardware. Now connect the pendulums to the swing bar, making sure not to over tighten the hardware. You want the pendulums to swing freely. Secure the A-frame extension pole to the curved A-frame pole with the hardware. Before moving on to the next step, be sure you've done the previous steps correctly because the next step is irreversible. Seat the poles together by striking the pole extension end on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard five or six times. Be careful not to hit your toes. It's crucial that you complete this step, otherwise the poles can separate during use and cause injury or property damage. On the opposite side of the pole where you put this hardware, take a self-drilling screw and drill through the underlaying metal in the pole. Attach a pole cap to the side with the extension and a foot cap on the opposite end.
Repeat the previous steps for the other A-frame pole. Connect the A-frame poles together at the top with the brackets. It may be helpful to only hand tighten this hardware for now. Attach the turn bar to the A-frame assembly with the hardware. Attach the swing bar brace to the top of the A-frame assembly, making sure the Lifetime logo is facing up and out. With the help of another person, attach the swing bar to the A-frame assembly with the hardware. Now tighten all of the hardware. With the help of another person, attach the swing bar to the tower pole with the warning sticker. Using a 3 8 drill bit, drill out 11 holes on each deck going from the top down.
Slide the deck onto the deck frame at an angle, making sure the hole at the center of the deck lines up with the hole at the center of the deck frame. Make sure the tabs in the center interlock. With the help of another person, secure the deck to the deck frame through the center holes with the hardware. Now we're going to add the first rail support to the tower, making sure it goes to the right of the pole with the warning sticker. The pole should be labeled DXO, if it's not, you're looking for the pole that has the holes further apart that are closer to the bottom. Put the base into the cutout on the deck, then attach at the top with the hardware. Now secure the bottom with the brackets, making sure they're oriented like this. On the other side of the pole with the warning sticker, repeat the previous steps. For the next two rail supports, repeat the previous steps, except for you'll be using pole DXI with the holes closer together and you'll only add one bracket at the bottom. Now secure the rest of the deck to the frame using the screws that are designed to go through the metal and the underlying poles. On the pole to the right of the pole with the warning sticker, attach the rock wall support through this hole, making sure the flat side goes against the pole. Only finger tighten the hardware for now. Now secure the other end of the rock wall support to the bracket. On the opposite side of the tower, repeat the previous steps. On the rail support to the right side of the pole with a warning sticker, add a rail handle labeled B to the right side. Continue working your way around the tower, adding a rail handle to each rail support, alternating left and right sides.
On the pole opposite the pole with the warning sticker, you're going to fill this hole with the hardware. On the poles to the right and left of the pole with the warning sticker, you're going to add two rail handles labeled A with the hardware. Add the rail barriers to the pole with the warning sticker and just finger tighten the hardware for now. Attach the other end of the rail barriers to the rail supports. Now go ahead and tighten all the hardware. On the pole opposite the pole with the warning sticker, you're going to attach the plastic barrier brackets to both sides of the pole. The hardware for the top bracket goes through the top hole, and the hardware for the bottom bracket goes through the bottom hole. Using the bracket as a guide, drill out a hole in the notch of the plastic barrier using a 3 8 drill bit. Repeat the same process for the other plastic barrier on the opposite side. Attach the plastic barriers to the brackets with the hardware. Using the holes and the rail support as a guide, draw out the notches on the opposite side of the plastic barrier. Attach the plastic barriers to the rail support through the holes we just drilled out. To help with the assembly, it'll be easier if you put a slight bend in the roof panels. When connecting the roof panels, make sure that the right edge overlaps the left edge of the neighboring roof panel. Secure all the roof panels together through the bottom two holes.
Now place the roof cap onto the roof, making sure the design lines up. Only secure the roof cap through the holes where the hardware is directly below it. Attach the roof support bars in a raised X formation. Lay the roof support in the bottom side of the roof, making sure that the holes in the roof support line up with the holes on the roof. Insert a cap into each end of the support tubes. Secure the roof supports to the roof through the holes that are closer to the edge, adding a support tube. Secure the roof supports to the roof through the lower set of holes that are closer to the center of the roof. This step will require the help of two other people, lift the roof onto the tower and align the roof supports with the poles. Secure the roof to the poles with the hardware. On the back of the rock climbing walls, drill out these four holes with a 3 8 drill bit. Attach the handholds to the rock wall, making sure they sit flush in the cutouts.
Connect these two wall panels together, just not through the top hole. Attach the wall panels from the previous step through the top hole on the bracket just to the right of the pole with the warning sticker. Connect these two wall panels together except through the top hole. Similar to the previous wall panels, attach these wall panels through the top hole onto the bracket to the right of the previous panels. Secure the two wall panels together to the pole with the hardware. This step may be helpful with another person. Attach these two wall panels together except through the top hole. Attach the wall panels to the bracket just to the right of the previous wall panels. Attach the two wall panels to the pole. This may be easier with another person. Connect these two panels together except through the top hole. Connect the wall panel to the bracket through the top hole, making sure the right side goes under the neighboring panel. Connect both sides of the previous wall panel to the poles. It may be helpful to have someone on the inside. Insert the caps into the bottom of the clamor legs and secure with the hardware.
Now attach the rungs to one of the climber legs. It may be helpful for the next step to leave the harbor loose. Attach the other climber leg to the other side of the rungs and tighten up all the hardware. The slide and the ladder are interchangeable. They can go on either side of the plastic barrier. Decide what side you want it to go on and drill out two holes from underneath the deck. Slide the ladder underneath the deck, then align the holes and secure with the hardware. On the other side of the plastic barrier where the slide's going to go, you'll have to drill out the three inner holes from underneath the deck. The slide comes in two parts and has interlocking channels that hold it together. At the top of the slide, drill out the three divots with a 3 8 drill bit. At the bottom of the slide, drill out the four holes where they interlock. Repeat the previous step for the other part of the slide. Connect the two slide pieces together and secure with the hardware. Place the top of the slide onto the deck over the holes you drilled out previously. Then secure with the hardware. The slide can get hot in direct sunlight, so we don't recommend installing it facing the sun. Now install the steering wheel onto the pole with the warning label with the hardware. Once the hardware is tightened, go ahead and add your cap. Now attach your swings to the pendulums.
At this point, the tower should be where you want it because after we complete this step, you won't be able to move the tower. On the poles, to the right and left of the pole with the warning sticker, we're going to attach anchors at the bottom. Start by removing the bolt at the bottom. Now that you've got the bolt off the leg, place a washer on the bolt, then the cable, and secure to the leg. It may be a good idea to leave the bolt a little loose so you can pull the slack out of the cable. Now take your anchoring rod and place the notched end inside the anchor. Place six to eight inches away and hammer into the ground. Make sure to hammer the anchor down at least 12 inches, if not more, or until the line is tight. If there's any slack in the line, pull the capped end of the cable and secure with the nuts. Once the nuts are secure, go ahead and add two more. Once that's done, tighten the bolt at the bottom. Repeat these steps for the other side. Thank you for watching our video on how to assemble your lifetime adventure tower playset. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.